I think we're about ready to start. Commissioner Fickus. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Well, hey, good evening, everyone, and I don't think I even need this, so, um, but I want to thank all of you for coming. Uh, we feel that this program at JPS, our bond program, is of the utmost importance for the future of health care in Tarrant County, and we want to educate the public about it, and that's, uh, that's what we're here tonight to do, and we're working really, I think we've got another... Uh, forum in uh, Mansfield on Monday, and we were in Arlington earlier in the week, and then last night we were in Lake Worth, uh, tonight here, and where else have you been? We're going to be going to Southwest in on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Well, great. And um, so, w we'll have an opportunity uh, for you to ask questions if you have them, and uh, after the presentation, so uh, we've got coffee cookies, water in the back. Uh, so feel free to at any time to step back there and get whatever you need. And I want to thank my uh, staff because they're all working extra tonight here. Uh, and I appreciate them being here. So uh, anyway, we'll get started. I'm going to turn this over to G.K. Manius, County Administrator, Tarrant County. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, good evening. Before we get started, we have interpreters, so we're going to ask them to, um, uh, to see if there's anyone that needs some type of interpretation services. So if you'll uh, start the, the sign. And as she does that, we'll be talking with, um, we'll, we'll also have a Spanish interpreter and also a Vietnamese interpreter. Okay, thank you. Martha. Mi nombre es Marta, estoy aquí para servirles. Si alguien necesita traducción, favor de decirme gracias. Tôi tên là Idria, nếu có ai trong cuộc họp này cần uh, sinh viên uh, ngủ ngôn uh, là xin giơ tay lên. Dạ, cảm ơn. Okay, there's no one that needs any interpretation uh, assistance tonight, so <coughs> ladies, you bet. Thank you very much. Just one more introduction before we get going. Uh, I'd like to introduce this gentleman over to my right. This is Robert Early. He is the CEO in, of John Peter Smith in the Tarrant County Hospital District Healthcare System. Uh, one other thing that, and Commissioner Fickus uh, alluded to it, was that whenever you have a question, if we could simply get you to come up to this mic and just state your name, because we are filming this and this will be on our website probably within a day. In fact, we're filming all of these presentations, so if you, if, if you miss something as, as we're talking about or need some clarification, obviously you can go to our website. <clears throat> I've got a small slide presentation, but I'm not going to get into the presentation first. What I'd like to do is to talk to you about the process that we have gone through. And um, once we get to that point uh, where we can get back into the slide program, we'll do that. <clears throat> There's, a, there's something on the table that's going to be on the ballot in November, November 6th, and that is a, a, a bond package request for the Tarrant County Hospital District. And that amount of that bond is an amount up to $800 million. So let me tell you how we got to that point. First of all, let me say that the program itself tonight is an educational program. This is not an advocacy program. We are not here to try to convince you one way or the other how to vote on this particular proposition. What we're here to do tonight is to simply try to educate you or give you information as to how we went about uh, developing the package and uh, what the package contains and, and some general statistics of the hospital district and why we believe that, uh, that, is, that uh, these recommendations that you're going to see in a few minutes are, are very valuable. So 
This is how we started. Several years ago, the hospital district came forward with a proposed bond package. And as part of that bond package effort, uh, we went throughout the uh, county. In fact, we held five different listening uh, seminars for people just, just like you, taxpayers, to tell you what we thought that the hospital district needed. And in those meetings, we quickly found out that while the recommendations of the district or the suggestions of the district were very valuable, the citizens of the county wanted more than just that. And that was important to us. And so what we did, we said, okay, we need to step back just a, just a little bit, and we need to make sure that we, if we're going to do a bond package, that we include in that bond package what the citizens have requested. We know what the district needs, but we also know that, that we need to address the issues of our citizens. And so about a year and a half ago, almost two years now, the commissioner's court made a determination that they wanted to take a good look at health care in Tarrant County. Not just that those aspects of JPS, but for the entire county. In fact, their vision was that we want to look at, because health care is changing so much, we want to look at what it would take or what type of services are going to be needed in this county, not for five years, not for 10 years, but for 20 years. And it wasn't just the role of JPS. What it was was we wanted to see the advance, how the advancements of, of the delivery of medical services and how we can become a healthier community, how we could, how we could have some type of impact on that in order to lessen the burden, not only on the hospital district, but also all the nonprofit hospitals and the for-profit hospitals and other healthcare providers in the county. And in order to do that, the commissioner's court decided to create what is now known as the Citizens Blue Ribbon Committee. In fact, we have Mr. Randy Morrissey here tonight. He is, he is the, one of our co-chairmen of that committee. The committee consisted of 12 individuals. It consisted of appointment by each of two individuals from each of the commissioner's court, which is, which is 10, and then the court as a whole chose the two co-chairs. There was also two liaisons from the hospital district board of managers and two liaisons from the commissioner's court. And some of you may have heard me say this, but I had my concerns about that committee. And I'll tell you why. When that committee came together, that was not a homogeneous committee. In fact, uh, there were, they, they, the individuals on that committee were a reflection, a true reflection of all the citizens in Tarrant County. We had different political views. We had different views of to what extent health care should be addressed by a public hospital. We had uh, different socioeconomic views. And I'll tell you, I honestly thought that we would have a very, very difficult time reaching a, a consensus that would be unanimous. And over almost a, a one-year period, this committee met every three weeks. And they did their due diligence. In fact, we assisted them by hiring two national consulting firms, one healthcare management and also our healthcare associates, and the other one was Cummings. We felt that it would be better that we would have a, a nationally recognized consultant lead these efforts, and our staff assisted also, and help our committee look at all the things that they wanted to look at and come up with recommendations. In February of this year, the committee brought forth their recommendations. And by the way, their recommendations were unanimous, which, um, which is, it speaks very highly not only of the leadership of the committee, but the membership of the committee too. They worked very hard on this thing. 
and they came up with five different major recommendations. And it wasn't something that, those recommendations were not something that simply the hospital district wanted, but this was something that, that the committee believed that the hospital district needed and what this community needed if we were truly going to address health care in Tarrant County. The commissioner's court then began to look at, at the recommendations along with the board of managers and they said, okay, this is a tremendous amount of need. And in fact, when we asked Cummings, who is a nationally recognized firm that prices um, medical facilities and equipment and costs related to those facilities, the bottom line for all five of those was $1.2 billion. A lot of money, a lot of money. And the court said, okay, so it, if that's the cost and we built everything new, then let's take a look at how we can meet the needs and accomplish those five tasks and at the same time hold down the number, the ultimate number that we would ask the citizens to support through a bond package. And so after a lot of deliberation and the court at that time and at this time and, and quite frankly for as long as I've been with the county, they had one absolute requirement and that requirement was non-negotiable. That whatever we did on a bond package, that it would not increase the property tax rate. And that's, that's pretty significant because there were great needs. It's not just the cost of building the buildings, but it's also the cost of maintaining and operating the buildings. And the cost of healthcare delivery is very expensive. So, what happened then was that we began to work diligently with the board of managers and, and senior management at the hospital district to, to really see how we might manage this process. And the hospital district made a commitment that over the next 10 years, because we all know that you don't build buildings all at once. It takes a, a, a period of time to, to construct buildings and things like that. But the hospital district made a commitment to bring up to $300 million to the table over the, over the next 10 years. The court said then, what else can we do to drive that number down? And the first thing that came to their mind and to our minds was that this, is, this, this dollar amount is a dollar amount that we had to build everything new. And we felt that, that at a minimum, that through effective management and efficient management, that we could bring some of those services in for a lesser amount, and that we might try other things, such as public-private partnerships. You know, let's look how efficient we can be. And so we then came to a number, and that number was $800 million. Now, I've been with the county for a long time, and, and we've had several major bond packages that the county has, has run. And I want to go back to the no tax rate increase. The county has sold over $600 million in the last 15 years or so. And we've implemented those programs, and quite frankly, we have done that without increasing the tax rate of Tarrant County. In fact, when you look at the tax rate, the hospital district's tax rate has gone down over the last 15 years. The county's tax rate has gone down over the last 15 years also. In fact, over the last three years, we have decreased the tax rate, the tax rate uh, in the county by four, approximately 4% 4 every year. That means over the last three years, we've decreased our rate by almost 13%. So my point on this is that when the commissioner's court says this is going to be a no tax rate increase bond package, they have an, have established, they have an established track record to make sure that that happens. And so as we move forward, we thought that we, we can't look 
and say exactly how we can become more efficient. We know that, that we can become more efficient and in, in, in create different strategies. And the $800 million then became an amount that we were going to ask the, the voters to approve with a guarantee that if we don't have to spend that $800 million, we're not going to spend it. Our goal is to accomplish the, the tasks or the recommendations of the Blue Ribbon Committee in the most efficient and effective way and still deliver the health care that, that the committee and the commissioner's court and the board of managers have looked at and said, this is what we need to do at John Peter Smith. Interesting thing about John Peter Smith's uh, um, bond uh, history is that this is the first bond in almost 35 years, actually 33 years. The last bond that uh, bond package that the hospital district uh, asked the voters to approve, and they did, was in 1985. And um, since that time, the facilities have grown old. The way that you deliver medical care in a facility is something that has changed. And our facilities, quite frankly, can't accommodate the way modern health care is delivered. And when I say modern health care is delivered, the type of health care that you find at, at private nonprofit hospitals, at for-profit hospitals, in, in almost every other governmental hospital. So let's talk a little bit about the slides. Now, there's, I will tell you that we're going to move through them fairly quickly because we've covered a lot of the information, but there's some good information in there also that I'd like to point out. First of all, we know that it's going to be a November election. And um, in a note about the November election, it's November 6th. Early voting starts on October 22nd, and it ends on November 2nd. Bond packages are always at the bottom of the ballot. So when you go and vote, I'm not telling you how to vote, but when you go down to vote, in order to find this proposition, you'll need to go through all the individual races. And immediately after that, this will be the first proposition that will be considered by the voters. So if it's your intent to, to vote for this proposition, please go to the bottom of the ballot because that's where it's located. We've... Um, We've talked a lot about the current and long-range needs. We also talked about the Citizen Blue Ribbon Committee. We talked about the role of the Commissioner's Court, the Board of Managers, and uh, I have to compliment, I won't, not only have to, but I want to compliment Robert and his staff for, for, for all the assistance and, and the leadership that they've shown as we worked uh, through this process. Here's the commitment of the Commissioner's Court. Commitment is the court is insured, ensuring that this is a no tax rate increase bond proposition. We talked a little bit about the fact that property rates have gone down. An interesting point, when we think about how we fund the hospital district, we think, well, it, it's funded by taxes. Only about 40% of the hospital's annual revenue, operating revenue, comes from property taxes. The other 60% comes from funds that they receive for providing services uh, uh, that, that either are supported by the state or federal government. Uh, the other comes from insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, those type of things. But only 40% of their annual budget is accounted for by the property tax. This is going to be a pay-as-we-go bond package. The commissioner's court, in conjunction with the board of managers, will have direct oversight of the bond program. Not all of the bonds are going to be issued at one time. I think that's important to know. We believe that, that, that this is going to be a project that's going to last about 10 years. I want to repeat something. The issue of issue or the, the issue of issuing that doesn't sound right. The the concept of issuing all debt 
is one that the court is still believes that at the maximum amount that we need is 800 million. Their commitment is that is that they work and try to figure out ways to bring in these five major elements without having to borrow all of that. We don't know that though. So we're asking for a top end and a promise that we will work diligently to make sure that we spend that money efficiently. Millions of taxpayer dollars are expected to be saved through these efficiencies. Because of our existing facilities, we're not that efficient. And it costs more to do the type of work that John Peter Smith needs to do. Let me give you an example. One of the biggest issues that, that the Blue Ribbon Committee encountered and the, one, of the, one of the more significant recommendations is the need for behavioral and mental health services. We all know what's happening in our community and in the United States when it comes to mental health. There are just simply not enough services provided and there are a lot of tragedies that occur because of mental health related issues. Currently, JPS does not have enough mental health beds to treat all the patients that come to JPS for mental health services. And so what they have to do, JPS has to place those individuals in private facilities. It costs JPS about $450 a day to provide services for mental health patients. <laughs> We have to pay about $600 a day when we put them in private facilities. So there's a delta of $150. When you compare the number of people that need services and the number of days they stay in, in, in facilities that are not Tarrant County facilities, that equates to about an additional cost, the delta cost, of about $9 million a year. So we could construct enough beds to handle those individuals and more that we know that are coming, then we will be able to save more money. It's not a matter of not treating them. Don't, don't believe that, that just because we don't have space, we, we don't treat them. You know, because, because JPS pays for that treatment, even if it's not in their facilities. That's a good way of being efficient. And there's other efficiencies. The, in, the, in, in our 1972 tower, we have rooms that have three people to, to a room, three beds, or rooms that have two beds in them. You can't, tr you can't put three people in a room. First of all, the, uh, the, the, matter, the manner of the illness is a problem. HIPAA is a problem. And so what happens is that we tend to not be able to utilize the beds that we have. And that creates greater inefficiencies. Plus, some of our buildings are so old that we can't bring in all the equipment or, or have building equipment because, because times have changed. And, and what is in a, a hospital room today compared to what was in a hospital room in 1985 has changed significantly. We talked about two different things that the committee was charged with. One was, one was looking at health care countywide. And uh, even the, the smartest people in the room realized that health care changes so fast that, that it's hard to look out five years or 10 years. But the one thing that they did know, and one thing that they emphasis, emphasized greatly, was there is a real need to improve the health of this community. If our people, our citizens stay healthy or more, more healthy than they are now, then the need for health care facilities will be diminished. So there's going to be a major effort. We're already working with other hospitals, with other health care providers. Our public health department is going to be heavily involved in that. You see it, in, if you live in, in Fort Worth, you're aware of the Blue Zones project that, that is probably going to expand countywide. Health and remaining healthy is very, very important. 
especially when you look at the demographics. Since, you know, let me go to the other slide here. Since 1985, our population has increased by over a million people. Tarrant County is one of the fastest urban county, or fastest growing urban counties in the United States. We anticipate within the next 20 years, we're going to have another, an additional million people move into this county. Our population should be somewhere around 3.2, 3.3 million people. The demographics of those individuals are going to change. They're going to be people like me. As I get older, I'm going to need a different type of health care because, you know, I'm going to need a different kind of health care. And there's going to be a lot of people like me that are going to need, you know, geriatric care and treatment of illnesses that you normally find in uh, senior citizens. One of the most important things, and as we do, do our presentations, we try to point this out. This last bullet is critically important. JPS is Tarrant County's only level one trauma center. And what that means is that if you're involved in a serious accident, if you're involved in a crime where you may be shot or stabbed, or if you have a serious heart attack, there's one place that you want to go, and that's to JPS. Because regardless of what you come in to that emergency with, what, what illness or what injury, there is going to be a specialist that will be able to treat you then. You're not going to have to wait six or eight hours for some specialist to be called in. They will be there, and they will be ready to treat you. That's why when you hear of a policeman being shot, a fireman being injured, a person that was involved in a serious automobile accident, what you hear is that they were sent to JPS. And they were sent to JPS for one reason, because they know that when that officer or that firefighter hits the back door of the emergency room, there are going to be doctors that are going to be trained to treat that person. We're the only level one trauma center in Tarrant County. Dallas has three. Dallas County has three. When you start going west and Tarrant County is on the western edge of, of the Metroplex, you have to go a very long way before you find that type of care. And that's important. We have to continually keep our level one trauma center up to up to a state of art position. It's interesting to note that only about a third of, um, of, the, of the people that need services is something that JPS can provide simply because of capacity. One thing I'd like for you to focus on here is the last bullet. It's a primary training facility for local doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. Residency programs are absolutely critical in order to train medical professionals. I bet you a dime that if you go to your primary care physician and ask them where they did their residency, I bet you a dime that most of them will say John Peter Smith because the hospital district has the largest primary care residency program in the United States. And it's a proven fact that doctors that take their residency in a particular location tend to stay at that location after they finish their residency and become full practicing doctors. That's important. It's important because of this. Remember when we talked about the population aspect? You know, we've grown by a million. We're going to grow by another million. We're going to need a large number of healthcare professionals just to treat the people that live in Tarrant County. That's one reason why we're having a new medical school that's coming to Tarrant County, the TCU UNT Medical School. It'll provide more doctors, more healthcare professionals for our citizens and our community. So, this is what the uh, 
ballot looks like. I'm not going to read it to you. If you have this card, it's on your seat. It's the language in the blue box. And as I said, it is located at the bottom of the ballot. So if, if it's your intent to vote for, for on this bond package, then please go to the bottom of the ballot to vote. Now, these are the programs that the Blue Ribbon Committee came forward with. The first one is to expand the mental and health, I'm sorry, mental and behavioral health facilities. We talked about why there's an absolute need for this. In fact, it's not just the facility itself, but mental health services that will be not only in this facility, but also working in partnership with, with our other agencies that will be expanded countywide. We're going to need to expand and update the hospital, hospital facilities for patient care and doctor and nurse training. We talked a little bit about the tower and the, and, and the age of the old tower and the efficiency, inefficiencies of that. We've got to get better. We have limited resources, so if we're going to provide a certain level of service, we're going to have to make sure that we're as efficient as we possibly can. We talked about the trauma center. Critically important. Critically important. Not just for those that, that have visited before, but even those that think that they will never visit it, visit that center. Believe me, the, the possibility and the probability that you will is pretty high. One of the things that the Blue Ribbon Committee uh, um, came back with as a recommendation, and there was a real need for this, and that was expanded cancer care. And the, um, we're having a growth in, in, the, in the medical community or in the medical district uh, in the south, south part of Fort Worth where the main hospital is of cancer care centers. But there is a, a great demand for cancer care and JPS has to play a vital role in delivering cancer care. We have four new regional community health centers. Very important. You know, when we did the listening sessions to, uh, when we talked about the bond package, you'd be surprised how I many, one of the major concerns was transportation. Transportation in that people that, that don't live in, in, in the center core of, of Fort Worth, how are we going to get to the doctor? If we're ill, how are we going to get to the doctor? The district currently has 14 centers. Yes, sir. And we are going, but the, the centers that we're recommending are going to be, I'll call them super centers. And they will be able to provide more types of care than you find in, in our uh, current centers. Which brings me to this. <clears throat> On October 11th, you're going to open a new super center, I like that word, super center, here in the northeast part of Tarrant County. Well, you can get, you can, you can get your groceries and your, and your hunting license there too, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> but please pick up this and, and come to, if you wanna see what, this, what these centers are going to be, this is going to be a good example. And again, this opens on October 11th, and um, I know that Commissioner Fickus will invite everyone to, to the opening of that. This is not one of them. No, this is... One we've been on for a number of years. Yes, and, and, and it is one of the 14 that we currently have, but it just simply opens. And it's important because if you think about it this way, the most expensive health care that you can deliver is in the emergency room. If you, the more health centers that you have, people will tend to go there when they're just getting sick. And they can be treated and they don't have to go to a hospital. What happens now is that there are a lot of people who need health care and they simply don't get it because they can't get down to the main campus 
or there may not be a center close to where they live. So what happens, they become more ill, and eventually they'll call 911, and they'll put them in the back of an ambulance, and they will take them to the emergency room. Well, <laughs> two bad things happen that way. First of all, that person is seriously ill to the point that they had to get an ambulance and go to the hospital, where we could have maybe prevented it or at least treated it before it got to that point. Second of all, when it hit, when, those, when that individual hits the, the um, emergency room, the care that we give them, and we will give them care, will be the most expensive care that we deliver. If we're going to treat patients, hopefully before they get extremely ill, and if we become efficient on how we treat patients and where that service is delivered, then there's an absolute need for these new, four new medical homes. Finally, we have an issue of an expanded ambulatory outpatient surgical facility. So let me tell you what that means, okay? That's, that, that, that descriptor is... Um, is comp complicated, I think. Outpatient surgery, that's the best way of, of, of um, defining it. Currently, if you are going to have surgery at JPS, you'll need to be in one of the surgical suites that is attached to and part of the emergency room. And many times, Emergencies come in, and they're going to need that surgical suite then and there. And the person that is supposed to have surgery, the, the outpatient surgery, is simply bumped. And we can't care for that person at that time, and, and they have to be rescheduled. Plus, we're using large surgical uh, suites to do surgeries that may not take as much of a sophisticated equipment as we have in those suites. The outpatient surger, surgical facilities will allow for those type of surgeries to occur and continue to free up the major surgical suites that we're going to need as we support an increasing population in Tarrant County. So <clears throat> that's what the program is. And of course, like every good slide presentation, you've got to have a deal where you show your, your website, right? So if you would like to have more information as it relates to this bond package, you can go to the county's website, which is www.tarrancounty.com. On, um, on the first page, or the, the, the website page, you'll see this icon, Tarrant County Hospital District Bond Election. You'll have all the information that, or you can access all the information that, uh, that we have utilized over these last two years to put this program together. You'll also have the slide pre presentation up there if you'd like to see it. So once again, the election is November 2nd. Sixth. I'm sorry, 6th. Early voting ends November 2nd. Thank you, yes. Mr. Early. Okay. I knew there was a reason we brought you along tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here to help. October 22nd. So early voting, let's try this again, okay? Early voting starts on October 22nd. It is over November 2nd, and election day is November 6th, okay? Well done. If you decide that you want to vote for this proposition, then during that election cycle, you will find this ballot or this proposition at the bottom of the ballot. Remember that it is a no tax rate increase proposition. And with that, I want to thank you for your time tonight. And uh, if there's any questions, I'd encourage you to come up to the mic and, and ask. And we'll try to, we'll try to um, answer those questions for you. If not, I'm going to turn it back over to... Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, this is to uh, Robert. Robert, how many patient encounters do you have a year at JPS, the system? Um, we're, we're right now 
averaging about 1.2 million patient encounters a year. And that, that number has increased, and I'm guessing with the population increase that we're expecting, that number will continue to increase. Good question. You bet. How many current suites do you all have that are hooked up to the vert serum for outpatient surgeries? Uh, right now, for our outpatient surgery or for surgery suites that we have, we have 13, and one is dedicated for trauma, and one is dedicated for heart procedures. And how many do you want to build? Well, you know, I don't know the exact number, but I would definitely think that that you would look at doubling that. But I don't want to be held to that. One of the things that Mr. Mania said that if we looked at an ambulatory surgery and you could bifurcate, you could deal with the trauma side of it, and you could deal with those surgeries that are coming in that you can't necessarily anticipate, and those surgeries that you can anticipate, appendectomies, tonsillitis, those type things, that would make a huge difference for us. And that would be able to, to be of significant benefit. Right now, it's challenging. If you come into J, to JPS for elective surgery, but we get one of our numerous traumas that come in, your surgery is going to be bumped. And that's really How a challenge. How does that work, though, if someone's already in the midst of their surgery? Nothing. How, that surgery will be completed, yes. I mean, but no. what, if, what if something comes in and they're You're just going to move out. another room, but that's why we always have a reserve room oh, for reserve trauma. Room. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And not only is that room reserved for trauma, the entire team, as, as Mr. Manius alluded to, everybody that is going to be able to do anything that you need is there ready 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Okay, one last question. Do you all have any idea where you want to put these new centers at yet? Um, we don't have exact locations, but the Blue Ribbon Committee did a really nice job of, of, of looking at the community. We looked at each one of the precincts that, that are out there because that's where you've got, you can look out here and look at population increases. You can go over to Arlington, Mansfield, and Kennedale and see those in, uh, population increases. You would want those centers really where the epicenter of that population growth is so that you can deal with the transportation challenges and the access and the easier access. That will go a long way at reducing our hope for reducing that huge increase in the emergency room. Since I started at, at JPS as the CEO in 2008, our daily population has grown from 175 patients a day to 380 patients a day on average. Is there a, one of those centers right now close to East Fort Worth, like say um, Cooks Lane and East Chase Parkway area? Or a needed area for one of the new ones, maybe. Trying to think geographically, Scott, the closest. I'll, I'll be, you know, Cooks Lane, uh, right to Arlington, probably the southeast side of the home, uh, in Arlington, and then. Um, which is on Arkansas and Cooks Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arkansas and Cooks Lane, Cooper. 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then just one other thing, I think it's Cooks Lane, Cooper, Arkansas, and then 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 Cooks Lane, Cooper, Arkansas, and to what Mr. Manny has alluded to earlier, what we're trying to do, aside from the fact that we will not provide groceries or a hunting license, but in addition to that, what we do want to have is to make sure that when you go there for an exam, if you had a child, you could get pediatric care there. If you took your husband in, he could get his care there, your x-rays, your mammography, everything as much as we can possibly have in one location so that we can be not only efficient with your time, but knowing people are going to have transportational challenges. And if we can have them there, that would be significantly beneficial. Are those run like doctor's office where you have an appointment, you have to make appointments? Yes, but we do have the, the, the ability even now in our clinics to have walk-ins as well. And okay. we, we understand that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you for your questions. Other questions? Commissioner Fickus, do you... Um... Well, I, I, I want to thank everyone who came out tonight. Uh, GK and Robert, I appreciate y'all being here. And I know you've got some staff people in the back. But uh, I, I guess the main thing is that there's, there's a critical need for this. Um, vote. I can't tell you how to vote, but go vote. And if you need to know more information, look on the website. Uh, and if you can't find what you want there, you either call me or call for Robert, or it's probably easier to call our office and we can get you in contact with somebody at JPS that can, if I can't answer the question. And, and I'm by no means a medical expert. But 
So please remember that. that if you have any questions, uh, give us a call. And uh, you know, we're there to provide that information because we think that the educated voter uh, will make the right decision. So, uh, anyway, I want to thank all of you. And GK, thank you for your presentation. Tonight. Thank you. Um, so, anyway, thank you. We're adjourned. <laughs>